What's up everybody? As you may or may not know, I did graduate from UNC Charlotte, as you can see here, in May of 2021. And I got my degree in systems engineering. You can see I also got honors too, it was cum laude. But yes, this was a Bachelor of Science in Systems Engineering. So in this video, I'm just gonna be going over my whole degree. It's actually pretty interesting because I switched my major from electrical engineering to systems engineering. So, you know, the freshman, sophomore, junior, senior courses may like intertwine, but I'll make sure to clear it up. So right now I'm on the UNCC website. This is for the system engineering degree is the requirements for it. So as you can see here, you'll have some gen ed classes. And this is usually in the beginning of your years or, you know, kind of leading up to junior year, maybe. So you'll see you have to take all of these. You have Chem 1251, which is General Chemistry 1. You'll have a lab with that. There's Econ 1101, which is the economics of social issues. So it's actually not really an econ class. It's like the economics of social issues. Then you have Calculus 1, Calculus 2, Physics for Science and Engineering 1. And you have Physics for Science and Engineering 1 lab. So if we actually look at my transcript, my freshman year, you can see I took general chemistry one, you know, it's pretty much a self-explanatory. It's chemistry. I ended up getting a B in there. It was a low B. And then I also got a B in my lab. And the first engineering class I actually had was ECGR 2103, which was computer utilization in C++. So this was actually a electrical and computer engineering course. And basically, you know, this was just learning the basics of C++. So, you know, printing statements, doing while loops, for loops, learning about arrays, lists. It was pretty much just like an introductory program into programming with C++. So in that one, I got a B. It was actually really confusing at first and it made me like almost afraid of programming. It was actually really interesting, you know, once I actually solved the problems with programming. So my next engineering course, which is actually required for system engineering as well, you can see it's engineering 1201, which is introduction to engineering practices and principles one. So with this course, I got a B in it. And basically with this course, it was just like an introductory to all engineering practices. So we had electrical engineers, computer engineers, mechanical engineers, system engineers, and civil engineers. I think I got all of them. I may have missed a couple or one, but basically it's a, it was a course for all engineers. Just learn a little bit about each discipline. So pretty much I thought this was a weed out course, which, you know, it kind of was like it had a lot of assignments. They weren't too hard, but there was just like so much to keep up with. You had to stay super organized to keep up with the course. So next I had an LBST class, which was just liberal studies. And if you go here, you can see this was a gen ed. There's LBST and you write, which is just, you know, liberal studies and writing courses. So for me, I just had like an Africana studies classes. We just studied African culture got to be in there and then next I had math 1241 which is calculus one honestly calculus one pretty self-explanatory if you learn about it you know derivatives math <laughs> I got an A in that course actually so that was nice that was my only A for that semester going into the next semester we had engineering 1202 so for this one it was introductory to engineering but for your specific major so at the time I was still electrical engineering so for this one I was actually learning about electrical engineering itself just at an introductory level so for this one it was actually split into two courses so we had a robotics course so we were programming some robots in Arduino we actually had like a little you know robotic car you had to program it to detect you know how to follow a line how to detect if like a wall was nearby and just have it navigate through certain things with programming and then the second part of the course was MATLAB which is just um, you know just another programming language but it's just heavily math based so for that one I got a B so next we had another LBST so this was just um, another liberal studies class with visual arts I fell asleep in that class a lot I got an A in there though it was super easy another one was Western history and culture that was another liberal studies class um, for that one we actually talked about death and religion it was actually very interesting yeah another LBST so we had health and quality of life and I got an A in there next I took calculus 2 pretty self-explanatory again you know this one had more integrals and I got a B in there and then I had my first you write course which was just writing and I got an A in there so something interesting I did since I didn't get an internship we can actually go to the summer of 2018 I took my physics classes over the summer just so I can get ahead of a little bit and I actually ended up getting a B there I believe but yeah basically with this you know we just studied forces kinetic motion I think that was it mainly for that physics class so now summer is over I I'm still an electrical engineering major, right? So now I'm a sophomore. So now we actually have some electrical engineering courses specifically. So first was network theory. So this was pretty much just a circuits class. It was pretty much all theory based. We didn't actually work with circuits itself. It was just doing the math for them. And you can see I struggled. I got AC in there. I don't know how I passed that class. It was actually a really hard struggle. But on the flip side of that, what's funny is it was an instrumentation at networks lab. So it was the lab of that class. I actually got an A in there. So like I was better with hands-on stuff 
rather than theory, even though, you know, theory is important, but I ended up getting an A in there. It was actually a lot easier when you, you know, you could actually work on the circuit yourself. Going into the next one, it was logic system design one. So this was actually about logic within electrical engineering and, you know, like the programming of electronics. So we did a lot of VHDL and I can, I'm going to be honest, I really didn't do a lot of that work. Some teammates on my team were very helpful there. I tried to help out as much as I could, but it was actually a really hard struggle, but I ended up getting a B in there because I just studied really hard for the final and got some extra credit. Then we have another LBST course, you know, critical thinking and communication. Next, we have a math course. It was differential equations. And what's weird is the homework and everything was very easy, but when it came to the test, they were super hard and didn't relate to the homework. So I ended up getting a C in there. And then one of my hardest courses, it was physics two. So this was actually, kind of more related to my major at the time for electrical engineering because we did a lot of circuit work and we also did some electromagnetism I believe but that course was just really hard there's only like a few questions on your exam and all the grades were based only off your exams so you know they didn't grade homework or anything you know classwork nothing it was all based on your exams and I struggled really hard and the only reason I passed it with a C is because I did extra credit to get me five extra points and it bumped me to a 72 so do your extra credit when you can so at this point I'm still a sophomore but as this semester was ending I was like mm, I don't know if I want to be an electrical engineer anymore I was struggling with the major based classes and I wasn't really enjoying it as much as I thought I would so I talked to some advisors I looked at the different engineering majors because I was like I still want to say technical so it was like it was in between like computer science or systems engineering and I decided to go with system engineering because I, I still thought I was like I don't really want to do programming and it was good enough to still stay technical while also focusing on some business aspects too unlike the other engineering majors so that's why I decided to go with system engineering and you can see that as I go into the spring so I didn't have any major based classes yet is because I was taking some prerequisites to get into there. So if we go back to the degree requirements, you can see we have the major courses listed here and then also some related courses where it's almost like a gen ed course, but just a little more focus that actually goes into the major based classes that were prerequisites. So as I was wrapping up my sophomore year, I took principles of biology one. You can see if we go in the major, that was a restricted elective course. We needed to take three credit hours of a physical science course. So that's just one. So I decided to take principles of biology. So basically, you know, it was just biology and I got to be in there. Next, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video was economics of social issues. That was a gen ed course. So I didn't take that before in electrical engineering, but I had to take it as I switched. And then I took the intro to engineering practices and principles two. I had to take it again because the last time I took it, it was for electrical engineering, but this time I had to take it for system engineering. So with system engineering, pretty much for this, we just learned about uh, supply chain, lean six sigma, and pretty much just like the founding principles of systems engineering. So it was pretty much just like an introductory course. And when I took the course, I actually really enjoyed it. And I was actually really glad that I switched my major. So you can see here, I got an A in there, which was a good start. So that was kind of like my first course into system engineering. Next, we had another math course, matrices and linear algebra got an a in there and then another one we had calculus three you can see i got an a in there i had a really good professor and then for this time for physics two i actually had to make sure i took the lab with this one because before i didn't have to but with system engineering i had to so i took that and i got an a so now we have wrapped up my sophomore year and actually which is very funny i actually got an internship with fidelity investments which is where i actually work full time now and i applied to their leap intern program which was for systems engineering i actually wanted to get in as a systems analyst because i was trying to avoid programming as much as possible but I ended up getting placed into systems engineering and it was actually good because I learned three fundamentals I learned Linux AWS and programming with Python and honestly I think Python was a lot easier than C++ where I started and I actually just really got the hang of it during the internship and now you know I actually do a lot of scripting and programming too so now I'm used to it and I'm not afraid of it so I actually was able to dive into it deeper into the major like you'll see for my junior year so now we're in my junior year now I'm actually a systems engineering major so another course I took was multidisciplinary professional development basically with this course they just had a lot of professionals come in from all over different engineering Engineering disciplines and just present what they did for their job and then we also had to do some research in certain areas and it was basically just like you know getting ready for the work world so pretty straightforward course and I got an A in there because it was really just you know you just showed up to class basically so next I took an information systems class and it was introduction to business computing and for this one it was a technical elective course so for this it was very interesting because since I was an electrical engineering major they actually had two of my electrical engineering classes here. It was network theory one, like I said before, and then my logic systems design class. So that actually helped 
with covering my technical elective courses. And then the third one I decided to take since there was nine credit hours required. I took Info 2130, which is Introduction to Business Computing. And pretty much this was just like an Excel class. So I got to learn more about Excel and you know, just more of the features that came with it. And I got an A in there, it was pretty easy. Next, we had an operations research class. So this was for deterministic models. So basically it was optimization using matrices. And in the system engineering degree, that was actually listed as a major course you can see here. They actually changed the name with SEGR under it instead of like an operations research class. So next we had computational methods for systems engineering. So basically this one was a introduction to programming with Python. And you can see I did that during my internship the summer before. So that was a lot easier than you know learning it from a professor i just really got hands on with it so that made the class a lot easier and i end up getting an a in there so next we had engineering 2106 and this was engineering economic analysis and this class was basically just using excel with engineering matters and project management it was really just an excel heavy class and i got an a in there so next i had to take a statistics course and it was probability statistics for engineers actually all engineers had to take that class and i ended up getting a b in there i really wanted to get an a i was close to it but i didn't get it all right so now going into the the spring semester of my junior year, I had to take another operations research class, but this time it was with probabilistic models. So this time we had probability added into the optimization and I got a B in there. So next was another system engineering course and it was system engineering concepts. And honestly, this was like another introductory course into system engineering, just learning about the basics and then also just learning about some basics of programming. We didn't really program too much in there, but we just learned at it from a really high level view. So I can't really like explain what went on in that class because it was like kind of confusing. It was basically just like summing up system engineering and I got an A in there because it was, it was pretty straightforward. So next it was another system engineering course and it was system simulation, modeling and analysis. So pretty much for this course, we just had to set up systems using Arena, which is a software for simulation. It was basically just using the software and data to make a simulation to get results of, you know, how you built the simulation, how well that performs. So pretty much you're just making a simulation of a process and then you're actually analyzing it so you can test it out before actually having to do it. So in that class, I got an A. It was a little difficult, but I was able to make it through. Next, we had another computational methods for system engineering, but it was a second course. And this time we did programming in R. So pretty much that's a statistical programming language. It was actually kind of similar to MATLAB, but honestly, I think it was a lot cleaner and the language was really similar to Python. So I was able to pick that up pretty nicely. And that was actually new to me and I got an A in there. So pretty much now you see I'm getting a lot of system engineering courses because now I'm really into the heart of the major. The next course I took was decision and risk analysis. So this is a course where um, we had to evaluate risk and decisions using probability and basically, you know, using that to make an informed decision. So we use a lot of Excel in this class and we actually had some plugins to make decision trees. And I ended up getting a B in there. It was pretty straightforward. The professor was, eh, you know, but you know, it was a pretty straightforward class. I was able to get a B in there. So next was another system engineering course, but this one was actually a system engineering elective. All the ones back here were actually system engineering major courses, but this one was an elective course. So I did Bayesian analysis for human decision. If we go here, you can see there's additional technical elective courses and you had to do it within the system engineering major. So with this one, this was another heavy Excel course. And basically we just had to learn a lot about information to make decisions, right? The professor of this course would probably be very disappointed. I can't really, you know, sum up this course. When I say information, I mean data. And for this one, we actually did some SAS programming in here. So that was actually pretty interesting. So that wrapped up my junior year. And then I actually got a return internship with Fidelity Investments as a systems engineering intern again. And that internship was interesting because I actually did some like full stack development, even though I wasn't a full stack engineer. But you know, it was just more skills to add to the resume, right? So now we're going into my senior year. So you can see everything from here to the rest is just all system engineering courses. So the first one was actually a senior design project. So a system design project one. So for this, my team and I were assigned to a project where we actually had to optimize a facility layout design based on virtual reality and eye tracking data taken from experiments. So since this was the first part of the senior design project, it was just a lot of planning, you know, learning how to use the VR systems, how to actually 3D model the restaurants and just planning how we were going to take up the experiments with the eye tracking data. So honestly, it was pretty hard because all that stuff was new, but we ended up getting an A just because we put in a lot of work towards it. Next, I had a production control systems class and basically this was just decision and risk analysis too, basically. So using Excel to make informed decisions and it was just more like an advanced version of it. And I ended up getting to be in there. So next was engineering experimental design. So it was just a lot of Excel data to go through. And honestly, I 
can't really sum it up. It's just Excel heavy. So many formulas I had to use in that class, but I made it through with an A somehow. I think there was actually a huge curve in that class. So next was actually a system engineering technical elective, and this was leadership skills for engineers. And this was pretty much just going over leadership within engineering and project management. So it was really just going heavy into that and then practicing those skills. And I was able to get an A in there. And everything before these were actually major base courses. So going next was also a major base course and it was total quality systems. And this was just checking the quality of a system. So, so let's say you're manufacturing something and it's at a mass production level. There's gonna be changes and slight difference in sizes for the thing that's being manufactured and just differences. And this was just talking about how to analyze that and then how to close those gaps to make sure you actually get the best quality in your system. So again, that was another Excel heavy course, but I ended up getting an A in there. So next was another system engineering course and this was actually an elective based course. So this was fundamentals of engineering management. And again, this was kind of like another project management and leadership based class within engineering. So it was very straightforward and I ended up getting an A in there. So that wrapped up my fall semester. So now going into the very last semester of my senior year, I only had four courses you can see here. So one of them was system design and deployment. And basically what this course was, it was just a more advanced R programming course. So again, it was very straightforward and ended up getting an A in there. Project management. Again, pretty self-explanatory. We just talked a lot about project management concepts and what comes with that. And I ended up getting an A in there. Next was the system design project too. So this was just continuing my senior design project. So for this one, we actually held the experiments. We had people come in, put the VR headset on, go through the restaurant. We timed them with, you know, how fast they could find a seat, how fast they could locate the bathroom with their eye tracking. And if they can maintain a distance from these walking NPCs within the restaurant. And it's funny because it was just like these anime girls because that was like the only free asset we can use. So basically my role in that was working with the eye tracking and then doing the programming for calculating how long people were within the radius of the NPCs. So again, it was actually really cool because I got to use, you know, the skills I liked to use the most within that course. And the eye tracking thing was actually really cool. I actually never worked with eye tracking before. It was cool that it was integrated into the VR headset. And then we had to use some, you know, special third party software to actually get the data from that. But since we worked so hard on it, we got an A in there. And yeah, it was just, you know, a really good way to sum up all of our system engineering skills and put them all together into a project. And then lastly, one of my most unfavorite classes was energy market. So this was a mixture between business students as well as engineering students. And we basically just had to learn about energy and how that works in the market, calculating prices, figuring how much that's worth, and then the actual engineering of the energy. So that one, it was really tough. The professors were really hard in that course, but I ended up getting a B in there. I really don't know how. I think I almost like bombed the final or something, but I had a high enough grade and good homework assessments in there to get a B. And then that summed up my system engineering degree. You can see I graduated with honors. And what's funny is with your system engineering degree, if you do it at UNC Charlotte, you're actually guaranteed a math minor. All you have to do is just declare it. It's just built into the major. So that sums it up for my systems engineering degree. If y'all have any questions about system engineering or what I do full time now, or you know, if you're going to UNC Charlotte and you're doing system engineering, if you have any questions, leave that down in the comment section below. I'm really happy to answer that. Otherwise, if you're interested in seeing my graduation, click the link in the outro. Make sure you subscribe and turn on the post notifications if you wanna be notified whenever I upload a new video. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.